Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Heart Side Chat for Madness at the Dark Moon Fair. My name is Cora Georgiou, and I'm an associate game designer on Hearthstone. Hello there. Uh, my name is John McIntyre. I am the set lead on Madness at the Dark Moon Fair. And we have some really cool stuff to talk about today. We've got six cards to reveal for you, and we're going to go a little bit into depth about how we got there, how Madness at the Dark Moon Fair came to be. Uh, but before we do that, John, I want just a little bit of background maybe for our players who didn't play World of Warcraft or aren't as familiar with the location. Uh, just talk to me a little bit about what is Dark Moon Fair and why did we want to bring it into Hearthstone? So the Dark Moon Fair is a fair from World of Warcraft. It's something that players have been asking for for a really long time, and we're super excited to finally deliver on it. Uh, the fair has things like shows, rides, crazy food, uh, mini games, and of course, prizes. And we really got to expand on those things throughout working on the set. Uh, it's also home to lots of crazy characters like Silas Darkmoon, who is the gnome that runs the fair. We also have various fair staff and fair goers. Fair goers like this first card that we're actually going to show off, which is Optimistic Ogre, which says 50% chance to attack the correct enemy. This is just one of these goofy cards that we love to do with, of course, Boulder Fist Ogre stats, Cora. Oh my gosh, he's a tank. But not everything is optimistic, Cora. We have some things a little awry going on at the fair. Yeah, we've we've got some real bad bad news bears up in here, John. Uh, and, and that, of course, I'm talking about the old gods. Um, Y'all have already seen all of our old god designs. They have corrupted the Dark Moon Fair, and they are in town. And this is sort of uh, us seeing a good opportunity to take a really awesome location, being the Dark Moon Fair, and, and something that our players have wanted to see in Hearthstone for quite some time, uh, and to combine it with these really incredible characters that are our fan favorites in the old gods. Um, and they're sort of just completely opposite ends of the spectrum. We have the whimsy of the Dark Moon Fair and the darkness and the corruption of the Old Gods. So to put them together, uh, while it is a bit of a departure from the world of Warcraft, we wanted to sort of put our own spin on things, um, and, and it turned out really, really cool. So, of course, we have new designs for our Old Gods, and you've seen those already, but we also wanted to pay homage to the original designs from Whispers of the Old Gods. Um, and we've done that with a cycle of cards that we call the Artifacts of the Old Gods. And I've got one that we can show you here today. Uh, this is called Jewel of Nazoth. It's an eight mana hunter spell that says summon three friendly death rattle minions that died this game. So very similar to what Nazoth did originally in Whispers. Uh, you can bring back some big beasts, big death rattle minions. Uh, it can be a really nice big value tool at the end of the game for a hunter deck. So as you can see, a, a, pretty straight up throwback to our OG old gods. Um, just trying to make sure that they're represented in this set as well. But obviously the big part of any set that is really uh, set making and that people are really excited for is the mechanic. And in Madness of the Dark Moon Fair, that is Corrupt. John, can you talk us through a little bit of the design process for Corrupt? How did you guys come up with this? Yeah, so Corrupt, um, this is our new keyword and it says this card upgrades in your hand after you play a card that costs more. So uh, this is this is a mechanic that is really cool to me because of how much the corrupt output scales with the mana cost of your card. Having an expensive corrupt card is actually really challenging to corrupt consistently. So we gotta put some really powerful outputs on it. Uh, like this first card we're gonna show you, this strong man. Uh, this is a taunt minion that costs zero once you corrupt it. So this is a really powerful defensive tool for your Yashiraj decks. And it's great for redeveloping your board immediately after maybe an AoE that you played, a card like uh, a Plague of Death and clearing your opponent's stuff. Yeah, I think this is one that we're we're going to be seeing quite a bit uh, in standard decks. It's a really fun one to play alongside the old gods, especially alongside Yashiraj who does interact with corrupt cards. Uh, there's a lot of really cool synergy there. But I think probably my favorite part of Corrupt is it was kind of just an excuse to be able to get more incredible artwork from the artists that we uh, we commissioned for Hearthstone cards. Um, and they're, they're so incredibly talented. So to be able to tell a story through this artwork and through these cards, 
Um, normally it can be a little bit difficult, you know, you only have one single still image to sort of get the whole point across for a card. But with Corrupt, we get to see how these locations or these people are affected over time because of the corruption of the old gods. So we have some pretty good examples of that. The first one that we have for you here is Auspicious Spirits. Uh, and this is a priest spell, it's four mana, and it says summon a random four cost minion. Corrupt, summon a seven cost minion instead. Pretty powerful card. Uh, you can get some pretty strong minions for four mana there in the priest class, but uh, what I really want to highlight here is the imagery. So you see the fortune teller and the spirits, but then you see in the second image how the spirits have been corrupted and now they're, they're very malevolent spirits sort of attacking that fortune teller. Uh, and it just shows specifically how this one character has been affected at the Dark Moon Fair by the old gods. But I think my favorite, favorite example of this uh, is sort of the answer to the question of what happens if we corrupt more than once? Um, and we decided that we can do that and the card that came out of it is Cascading Disaster. It's a Warlock spell that says, destroy a random enemy minion, corrupt, destroy two, corrupt again, destroy three. And this means that we were able to get three specific art pieces because you are corrupting twice, so the art will change in hand both times you corrupt, and you get to see sort of this single fair ride, looks like a roller coaster, uh, over time as it's being corrupted, and you've got uh, the, the ride itself has been corrupted, the riders in front are totally oblivious to what's happening to their friends in the back, uh, and you see as it goes on, things just get grimmer and grimmer for our fairgoers. Um, this is definitely one of my favorite examples of the storytelling that we get to do because of the corrupt mechanic. Um, and these are some really cool corrupt cards, but I think probably the biggest and the baddest of them all is a minion. Uh, and John, I'll go ahead and let you show this one off. Yeah, so... Uh... We have a new keyword, corrupt, and of course we have to explore what does a legendary corrupt card look like? And that's this next card, Ticketus. Now, Ticketus removes the top five cards of your deck, but when you corrupt him, he removes the top five cards of your opponent's deck. This card's really awesome because we got to play with uh, sort of how corrupt can completely change the way your effects work. It, it's great in Warlock because you get a catch up on fatigue, after you've been life tapping and drawing a bunch of cards, it's just really mean and flashy. Yeah, I think Corrupt is really interesting because it doesn't need to be a strict upgrade. You can change the effect of the card, like what we've done with Ticketus here, um, and sort of flip it around on your opponent. So this this is just a really cool design, one that I'm really excited to see people playing with. Uh, but John, this whole set has been your baby. You've spent so, so much time working on this as the set lead. Um, I mean, is there anything else that you want to say? I just selfishly, as a big fan of the old gods, I can't wait for the set to come out November 17th. And I'm going to be on ladder playing those different old god decks. Yeah, this is going to be a real deck building uh, party for everybody, I think, with the Absolutely. new old gods. But make sure to check out playhearthstone.com to see all of the cards that have been revealed so far. Uh, and you can tune in to twitch.tv forward slash playhearthstone for our final reveal live stream, which is going to be November 11th, of course, before the set release on November 17th. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. And until next time, we'll see you in the tavern. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody.